Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be talking about my choice for this year's NBA MVP. Last video was about the rookie of the year. That combined with like other things I've done on Facebook have gotten a ton of traffic and a ton of uh, response and things like that so it's pretty exciting. Hopefully the more videos that we do like this the more interest it sparks up and we can debate who I think, who you think, your thoughts, my thoughts, etc. So it's been fun. So to start off my MVP talk, I just wanted to give some facts about the MVP. Some stuff you may know, some stuff you may not. Some of the stuff I didn't know, so it's kind of cool to learn. So the MVP, the winner receives the Maurice Podoloff Trophy. I had no idea who that is. Um, for those of you who don't know, he was the first commissioner of the NBA. So the Maurice Podoloff Trophy is what they get. I feel like this is a topic of controversy or a topic of interest for me as well. Until the 1979-1980 season, the MVP was selected by the players. Now it's selected by a panel of sports writers and broadcasters. In my opinion, I mean, you can kind of water it down with the players because I know last year the All-Star game, players voted. And I know that like players voted for themselves and things like that, but I think like the players know who the best player in the NBA is. And so finding out their vote I think is much more holds much more water than when the sports writers and the broadcasters do it. So somehow they should figure that out cuz some broadcasters sportscasters don't know shit, so yeah. Steph Curry was the first player to be a unanimous vote. When Russell Westbrook won the MVP last year, he was the first player to win it without his team winning over 50 games. Every player who's won the MVP has been to the finals at least once, except for Steve Nash and Derrick Rose. Okay, so those are just some fun facts about the MVP award itself. Also, a much up for debate issue. It says that the award is given to the best performing player of the regular season. Very debatable on what your definition for the best performing player is. That's why there's so much back and forth and people thinking different people should win it. But, okay, so the three people that I think it came down to this year from the media and whatever was James Harden, LeBron James, and Anthony Davis. So, like last video, we're just going to go through some stats real quick. Points, James Harden led the league in points this year. He had 30.4. Anthony Davis was second with 28.1, and LeBron was third with 27.5. Assists, Russell Westbrook led the league in assists, but LeBron was second with 9.1, and Harden averaged 8.8, .8, so very comparable with points and assists. Obviously, Anthony Davis isn't going to be really comparable with those two in assists, but he was the fifth in rebounding with 11.1 .1 per game and the first in blocks with 2.6 per game. One thing to note, LeBron this year played in all 82 games. First time of his career, neither Harden or Davis did that. They both were injured at different points in the season. Harden hit the most threes this season, probably because Steph was injured for a lot of the year with 265. We know Steph has hit in the 400 a couple times, so... From two-point land, LeBron averaged 54.2%, Harden averaged 44.9%, and Davis averaged 53.4%. One thing that was kind of surprising to me to note was that LeBron and Harden both averaged the exact same percentage from three. They both shot 36.7% from long range, just Harden shot about five more per game than LeBron. Another interesting stat to note is that Harden led the league in free throw attempts at 10.1 a game. LeBron, in comparison, only shot 6.5 per game. I thought that was kind of interesting and fishy knowing the differences in the games. And I think that James Harden has just mastered like figuring out ways to draw fouls, leaning in or sweeping the arm or different savvy moves that he does to get more foul calls. I don't want to sound like I'm hating, I just feel like somehow he's manipulated the foul call so that he gets more fouls, he gets to the line more. He risks not getting the foul calls and throwing up bad shots or things like that more than other players, and he gets rewarded more as well because of that. 
One stat I thought would be good to show is turnovers. So DeMarcus Cousins led the league in turnovers with five per game. Westbrook second, 4.8 per game. Harden at 4.4. LeBron at 4.2. So I know that people were tripping a few years ago when Harden and Westbrook were killing in assists. But I'm pretty sure they also both demolished the total turnovers in a season record as well. So just important to remember that. Remember all sides to everything. LeBron demolished them both in triple doubles. But double doubles, LeBron actually had two more than Anthony Davis. I thought that was kind of interesting. With all that said though, with the quote, men lie, women lie, stats don't lie. Sometimes I think stats can be misleading and it's not all about stats. You got to use the eye test. So all three of these players' teams made the playoffs. All three of them advanced to the second round of the playoffs. The Rockets were the overall number one seed with a 65-17 and 17 record. The Cavs were the fourth seed with a 15-32 record. And the Pelicans, the sixth seed, 48-34. and 34. So besides all of the stats, personally, I think it was James Harden's to lose to start the season. The last few seasons he's had amazing seasons statistically he's been amazing i think at times in the playoffs there have been times where uh, i'm a little disappointed in his effort or how he shows plays out in important games but i felt like it was his at the beginning and throughout the middle of the season lebron was steady my only knock for lebron is that his team was so garbage for like that stretch that it's hard I know people will say like it wasn't his fault yada 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 but I just I feel like I can't excuse him for some of those embarrassing losses and then I think AD was the dark horse once Cousins went down he just played out of his mind and to end the season I think he put himself in the MVP chatter I'll just have it be let it be known I've said this before LeBron is my guy um, if I could I would argue him I would argue him every time. Um, people say that he should he should win the MVP with the, what he was given. He's had the best stats in his career so far at his age and in his 15th season. And maybe I'm a little manipulated by the media. I don't know, but I just feel like Harden has had a more outstanding season this year than LeBron. He's the best player that was the best team this year who had the best record. I know that the regular season doesn't really tell necessarily who the best team was, but the Rockets do look tough. They look like they're going to have a deep playoff run this year. Hopefully they meet with the Warriors and we can see that clash. I'm mostly comparing LeBron and James Harden because I think that Anthony Davis just is going to end up in third. One of the other two is going to win it. LeBron makes his teammates better. Um, people will say he carried a garbage team. He went through two different teams this season. He went through a lot of adversity and still carried them and played very well. But Troppy Boy's choice for this year's MVP has got to go to James Harden. I just feel like he's had a more outstanding season. Um, he's consistently been great. His team's been great. I know he picked up Chris Paul and he's got a little bit more help. He's been balling out the last few years and I can't deny him again this year. So my pick this year for the NBA MVP has got to go to James Harden. Salute the beard. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know why. And let's duke this out. Alright, till next time. Peace!